the early bird. On the island of Sodor, all of the engines on Sir Topham Hatt's railway are busy. Gordon pulls the express. Percy delivers the mail. And Thomas puffs and shoves cheerfully on his branch line. One morning, Thomas's fireman fanned his firebox ready for work. Thomas saw that his best friend Percy wasn't there. Good morning, James. Have you seen Percy? No, I have too much to do to see Percy. Then, Sir Topham had arrived. Thomas, Percy has popped a piston. He has to go to the steamworks to be fixed. Percy won't be able to deliver the mail tomorrow morning. You must do it for him. Thomas was excited. He had never delivered the mail before. He tooted his whistle loudly. Yes, sir. I've always wanted to deliver the mail. Make sure you do a good job, Thomas. Of course I will, sir. Don't worry, sir. Then Thomas puffed proudly away to his branch line. Thomas stopped at a crossing. Gordon was there. Percy is being fixed. Tomorrow, I'm going to deliver the mail run for him. Percy's mail run? Have you asked Percy how to do it? Don't worry, Gordon. I know all about delivering the mail. <laughs> do you indeed? Then the gate opened, and Thomas puffed quickly away. Thomas worked hard all day. That night, he went to see Percy at the steamworks. Percy didn't look happy. Is your piston fixed, Percy? No, it's still broken. Don't worry. I'm going to do your mail run tomorrow. Thank you, Thomas. Shall I tell you what to do? I know what to do, Percy. Now, I have to go to sleep. I shall be up very early. Well, if you're sure, Thomas. Very sure, Percy. I have to go back to Tidmouth now. I need lots of sleep. Goodbye. Percy watched as Thomas chuffed away. The next morning, Thomas woke up very early. He felt very proud to be pulling the mail trucks. There wasn't a peep to be heard as Thomas chuffed across the island. Everyone was fast asleep. First, Thomas puffed to the quarry. I must let the quarry manager know that the mail is here. Thomas was excited. He blew his whistle very loudly. And then he chuffed cheerfully away. Thomas hadn't seen that his loud whistle had woken up Mavis. Uh, who's making that noise? Next, Thomas chuffed to the docks. I must let the dock manager know that the mail is here. Thomas was excited. He blew his whistle even louder. And then he chuffed cheerfully away. What Thomas hadn't seen was that his good morning whistle had woken Cranky up. <sighs> Who woke me up? This is fun. Lastly, Thomas steamed into the steamworks. I must let the steamworks manager know that the mail is here. Thomas was so excited, he blew his whistle louder than ever. Oh. And then he huffed happily away. What Thomas hadn't seen was that he had woken Victor and Kevin up. Oh, what's that noise, boss? Uh, who knows, Kevin? Who knows? Some early bird. Thomas worked hard all morning. Everywhere Thomas went, he blew his whistle loudly. Delivering the mail is fun! Soon, Thomas had delivered all the mail. 
it was time for him to puff back the Tidmouth sheds for a rest. As Thomas passed through the quarry, he saw Mavis. Her freight cars were being loaded with slate. Then there was trouble. Mavis hadn't lined up her freight cars under the hopper. Slate spilled everywhere. That's strange. Mavis never makes mistakes. What Thomas didn't see was that Mavis was fast asleep under the hopper. That's why she had put the freight cars in the wrong place. Next, Thomas passed through the docks. Cranky was unloading some big crates from a ship. Then there was trouble. Cranky dropped the crates. They fell to the ground with a smash and a crash. That's strange. Cranky never makes mistakes. What Thomas didn't see was that Cranky had fallen fast asleep. That's why he had dropped the crates. Thomas pulled into Tidmouth's shed. He wanted to tell Percy all about the mail delivery, but Percy wasn't there. Sir Topham Hatt was there. He was cross. Someone woke Mavis up too early by tooting too loudly on their whistle. Then someone woke up Cranky at the docks and Victor at the steamworks. Now they have all made silly mistakes. Thomas knew he had woken everyone up with his cheerful whistle. He felt terrible. I'm very sorry, sir. It was me. Then, Thomas, as Percy is still not fixed, you must do a better job tomorrow. I will, sir. I promise, sir. Then Gordon arrived. He had heard all about Thomas's trouble with the mail run. You were right, Gordon. Delivering the mail is a hard job. I should have asked Percy what to do. And this time, I will. That evening, Thomas visited Percy at the steamworks. He asked him all about delivering the mail. And Percy told him all about being quiet. The next morning, Thomas set off early, pulling the mail cars. He stopped at the quarry. This time, he didn't blow his whistle. He puffed very quietly so that he didn't wake Mavis. Next, Thomas stopped at the docks. He didn't blow his whistle here either. And he didn't wake Cranky up. Lastly, Thomas puffed into the steamworks. He dropped off the mail, and he didn't blow his whistle once. Victor stayed fast asleep. But Percy had woken up early to see his best friend, Thomas. Well done, Thomas. You did everything right. Thank you, Percy. Now I know the most important thing about delivering the mail. You have to do it quietly. Percy was so happy for his friend that he wanted to toot out loud. Then he looked at Thomas. Thomas had fallen fast asleep. Sleep well, Thomas. And Thomas snored the sleep of an engine who had done a very good job.